Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, July 24th. It's a hot day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Not as hot as some of you guys have been getting, but uh, we're going to hit 97 today, I think. We hit 98 yesterday. Relief's coming tomorrow. It's going to be in the 80s with rain, so that, that's uh, actually a good thing right now. Uh, and boy, it's hot. Uh, I had such a... <laughs> Such an interesting morning today that I'll, I'll tell you about. It involves all sorts of gardening things and chores and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's much later than I normally make these. In fact, it's just a little bit after noon right now. I usually make these around six, seven o'clock in the morning, and it's just been a been a crazy kind of day. Anyway, um, I'm, I don't have a pipe yet because I'm going to be trying something different today, and I wanted to talk to you a bit about that. I have a friend. Uh, his name is Jim Finn. And Jim actually uh, got in touch with me the other day and, and said, uh, hey, I've got some blends that I've been working on. Would you like to sample a couple of them? And I said, well, yeah, sure. You know, what, what are they? And he said, well, the first one is Burley based. I said, yes, I'll, I'll, because <laughs> I do like Burley. So what I'm going to be trying today is in this packet here, it's called Jim's Blend. And I'm gonna, I have not opened this yet. I, I've done nothing, but I'll, I'll load the pipe and I'll tell you a bit about Jim. So, Jim got in touch with me, oh gosh, four or five months ago, I guess. Um, and it was regarding a pipe restoration thing, and I, I don't honestly remember what it was. And we've been talking off and on about pipe making and pipe restoration. Had to cut the top off of this. I like these uh, Mylar bags that, that are vacuum sealed. It's a neat idea. So, let's see what we got here. Uh, it's a little pressed from being in the bag, but of course I'm not going to be able to show you this probably. Mmm, smells like burly. Mm, you get some idea of what I'm looking at there. Not great. Um, I'll put some in my hand and try to get a feel for what we got here. Yeah, that looks like burly. Maybe a little bit of perique in there. I do not know anything about this blend, so really looking forward to trying it. So let's go ahead and oh, I made a mess. Sorry, Jim. And, and by the way, I've got to talk about. Uh, many Jims and Tims in this video, so if I get the names confused, I apologize. Um, and as I'm loading this, and I will get back to Tim, uh, Tim Finn, the person that sent me... No. See, I've already done it. I will get back to Jim, who sent me Jim's blend. But I want to say, uh, if you haven't seen the Friday live stream from uh, this past Friday, it was a lot of fun. Uh, my buddy Tim Fournier uh, came on and we both smoked Rustica. He smoked it for the first time. We had a pool going to see how long it would take for uh, Tim to uh, turn green, and he didn't. He he lasted the whole the whole hour and then continued to smoke it right to the bottom of the bowl. So uh, we did have a little contest going, and my buddy Eddie Texas Piper won the contest. He he picked the latest time, and Tim didn't have any trouble, so he wins. And uh, we're going to be getting him a, a tamper from, from Larry. So, Eddie, if you're watching, get me your address or I'll send you an email later. All right, we got this loaded up. The problem with these is I'm going to have to put it in something different now because it's open, but that's okay. Loaded very easily. The smell was burly. Um, very reminiscent of something like... Um, uh, Burley Flake, h, h Burley Flake, or the Amphora Burley, um, reminiscent of that. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe something like, um, come on, Solani, H. Burley Flake. Really? We're going to have to resort to Maryland again. That's okay. Mm. 
Marilyn never lets me know. Let's keep this here, I guess. So, Jim runs a, a company. I, it's probably going to be hard for you to see that, so I actually have it in a picture here that I'll put up. And his company is named Premium Polish Pipes. You can see his website there and uh, contact information if you want to get in touch with, with Jim. And he is on Instagram and he posts pictures of, of the pipes that he's worked on. Uh, Jim is doing really good work. Uh, I've been very impressed with the restoration repair work he's done. He also restores uh, estate pipes and sells them through his website. So there's some good deals and uh, sometimes some unusual hard to find pipes. In addition, you know, I've been telling everybody to go to Tim West, uh, J.H. Lowe, and you should. Uh, Jim does excellent work, and uh, Tim does excellent work, uh, and you know, he very graciously said that if I want to send former customers of mine to him, he would he would do his best for them. But he's a lot faster than I am. Jim, Jim Finn, premium polished pipes, has been working with Tim West, um, learning from him, uh, you know, visiting his shop, asking questions, seeing how it's done. And when I've talked to Jim from Premium Polish Pipes, uh, we have a very similar sort of philosophy about pipe repair and restoration. Again, I've seen his work on Instagram. He does wonderful work. So if you need a pipe repair, uh, Premium Polish Pipes is another option uh, to, to J.H. Lowe. And I recommend you, you use them both. And uh, Jim might be a little less busy than Tim West, but they both do good work. So I will put a link below to Jim's website and it just gives you another another option. Now this one, other than suffering from me talking too much, I'm using the old finger tamper here, I'm talking too much so I haven't gotten it properly lit yet. This is interesting because it's definitely burly. As I mentioned, it smelled like uh, some of those, you know, just in the tin note, the bag note, whatever. It smelled like some of those burly flake type things like the H&H &H burly flake, the uh, Amphora burly, and uh, Solani H burly. It reminded me of that, but the flavor of this This is like, I would swear right now I'm smoking uh, Edgeworth. You know, the old Edgeworth flake. This is really good. I had no detectable topping on it, which is the one problem with Edgeworth. It does have. For me, at least, it does have a little bit of a chemical topping to it. But yeah, this is this is good. I think this is straight burly. I'm not getting perique. I'm not getting any any Virginia. If there's Virginia in there, it's very very slight. And the burleys, I'm not good at picking out different types of burley. I just like them all. Good job, Jim. This is this is really very good, and I will enjoy the rest of this. I know this is probably not of great interest to folks because this isn't something you can go buy, but I I enjoy trying new things, and I thought maybe you'd want to share the experience with me. I got another one of uh, Jim's blends that I'll that I'll be trying 
uh, probably before next Sunday. But if you're if you want me to do this again, let me know. And if you think this is terrible and boring, let me know. <laughs> uh, so I, I said this has been a crazy day. I stayed up too late last night. I stayed up till almost one o'clock in the morning. I never do that. But I was watching uh, Brides of Dracula, Svengoolie, and then I got interested in something else. And before I knew it, it was one o'clock. I didn't get out of bed till nine o'clock this morning. I don't think I've slept that late in, I don't know, a long time, a very long time. I'm normally up at six. And the problem is, I have to do these out, outside things, you know, and it's going to get hot. I know it's going to get hot. And what woke me up was the dog barking. My wife sleeps late on the weekends. Well, to be fair, she sleeps late. She doesn't mind me saying that. She's, she's a night owl. So, I run downstairs to get, let the dogs out. I got all these other things I do. Sunday morning is a pretty, pretty busy morning. So the dogs are out. I got to do some other stuff. Um, I want to put some laundry in. So I have to go upstairs to get the laundry. But I got to get the dogs in first. And Isabel is just laying out in the yard. And she, she's basically got the opinion, it's going to get hot. I'm staying here until it gets hot. I'm going to enjoy this. And she's just laying in the sun. And every time I call her, she would like roll one way, roll the other way. <laughs> she would not come in. So finally I said, okay, the heck with you. I close the door, I run upstairs and, and start getting the laundry together. Of course, the minute I, I set foot on the top step, she starts barking. And I thought, well, it's nine, nine o'clock, 9.15 at this point. Neighbors should be up anyway. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna let her sit out there and I'm gonna do what I need to do. I get the laundry together, come to, anyway, I realized that I had to work backwards at this point because I couldn't keep my normal routine and get the stuff done that I had to get done outside before it got too hot. So I had to go backwards. And this is a problem for me because I am a creature of habit. I do not like my routine changing. Normally I would have made this video before I even went outside. So I worked backwards. I. Uh, Got brought in the first real vegetable harvest of the year. Let me show you that. Uh, not too bad. This has been an odd year for, uh, for, for, for the vegetable garden. So up at the top there you can see uh, green beans. We've got enough for the two of us to have them uh, as a meal. And there's problems with the green beans that I'll tell you about. Uh, in the middle there's arugula and there's a lot of arugula. Um, and it's good. I, I tried it this morning. It's really good arugula. That will, we don't usually make straight arugula salads, but if I did, uh, that would probably be two salads worth, but we just put a few leaves in a salad, so that's gonna last us at least a week. And then you see peppers. We got some uh, Hungarian banana peppers, hot Hungarian banana peppers, and some red cherry bomb peppers. And the peppers are just starting to take off, so we're gonna get a lot more of those. And uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be a good season for peppers. The arugula, I, I left some leaves on, uh, some of the smaller ones, and hopefully that'll sprout up and we'll get another batch out of it. And then in, you know, probably second week in August, I'm going to reseed the arugula and the beans so we can get another crop. The beans, they're a problem this year, and I, I think I finally figured it out this morning. So most of the plants are just, they, they don't have any leaves. And they made some beans, you know, but they just didn't do well. And as I was picking them, I was finding stalks that the whole, a stalk with no leaves but beans on it laying on the ground. Like it had been clipped off. I hadn't been clipping anything. And the leaves are pretty much gone. And then as I looked, at, as I was picking the beans, there were a couple of beans that seemed to have just a single bite taken out of them. Just on the side, like something was sampling them. I think what's happened... So we've never had this problem before. There's either a new critter that likes bean leaves, or 
maybe the rabbits are trying to find sources of water because it's been so hot and dry. Because they never bothered the beans before. Whatever it is, I think it's biting off entire stalks, stripping the leaves off of them and eating them, and leaving the beans behind. Um, in some cases, it takes, you know, there were some beans on plants, but there were no leaves. Very strange. And the arugula, which is planted in with the beans, was all trampled. So, yeah. So when I reseed, I'm going to put uh, some banger, you know, flashy, like aluminum pie pan or something. That'll make the neighbors happy, banging out there at night. But, you know, keep my beans safe. So that that's all good. The peppers are doing great, and usually we, I pick some of them small because a couple of the plants are struggling a little bit. Uh, and I figure I'd rather have them put their energy into growing now than making peppers. But we're, we're going to have a nice crop uh, of both the banana peppers and the red peppers. And I, I like, they usually come in strong late in the summer, early fall. And then I uh, cut them up and freeze them or pickle them and uh, have them for the winter. So that's, that's going to be great. The other thing I've been doing is our mailbox. Uh, we have the original mailbox. This house was built in the 60s. That mailbox was probably hung up in the 60s. And it was getting a little rusty and grungy and whatnot. So I took it down yesterday, took it outside and cleaned it, uh, wire brushed it to get the rust off, uh, sanded some spots that were particularly rusty. And at that point, it's amazing how hot a piece of black metal can get when it's 98 degrees outside. It, it was, I couldn't handle it anymore. It, I mean, I couldn't hold it uh, to, to do the work on it. So I got it cleaned up and I brought it down here, uh, wiped it down with, with uh, denatured alcohol, and then I started putting uh, some black spray paint on it. And I got a picture here for you. This is where we're at right now. Uh, those plates on the front, I believe, are brass, and they were, I thought they were held on by those decorative bolts that you see down in the lower right corner. But actually, they're welded on. Uh, the whole box is steel, and they, they seem to be somehow welded on. So I had to paint over them and then wipe the paint off, and I will, uh, once I'm happy with the paint, I'm going to go ahead and, and sand those with, uh, you know, up to a high, up to a high grit so that the, um, you know, it doesn't look, you know, get a satin finish on it basically and get the black paint off of it. And you can see I painted the, uh, the decorative bolts as well. So this is good. This will go up later today, I hope, uh, if all goes well. But there's a story behind this. Uh, my wife has decided that the numbers on our house, which are right above the mailbox, are too small. Now, these numbers were probably put up at the same time the mailbox was put up. No one has ever said, I had trouble finding your house because the numbers are too small. I don't even think people use house numbers anymore because of GPS and everything, but she decided the numbers were too small. She bought new numbers, and she said, you know, put up new numbers, and they're, they're actually, and this isn't great, but they're actually nailed into the brick. I'm going to get, I don't, you know, I'm going to pull these nails out, and it's, the hole's going to be too big, I'm going to have to patch it, and then I'm going to have to put a new, I, I don't even know how you hang stuff up on, I just don't want to get into this right now. So I said, okay, that's another day, let me just get the mailbox done. Well, she has to go out and try to take the numbers off, and she was able to get one out, and she lost the nail because it fell into the bushes, and and now she's panicked because. <laughs> uh, I got to admit, I was a little annoyed because I told her to just leave it alone, and it was one of these things where she has to have bigger numbers there, and I don't know why. Anyway, so that's another thing I've got to do now. No rest for the wicked, as my grandmother used to say. But 
I put what I think is going to be the last coat of paint on the mailbox before I started the video here. Oh, the other fun thing that I, that I, that I left out is um, spray paint in the basement is not a good idea. It got pretty fumey down here yesterday. I did open the windows, but... Yeah, not, not the smartest thing to do. Anyway, I survived. So I put a last coat of paint on just a couple of problem areas I touched up. And then I'm going to sand off those brass plates and hopefully put it together and hang it up. Uh, and once that is hung up, I am going to take the rest of the day off. Because I need... It's one of those weekends where I'm looking forward to going back to work because it'll be quiet and restful. That's okay. Most of it is my fault. You know, I staying up too late last night, that was my fault. Uh, the mailbox is a bit of pressure there because, you know, I took it down after the mail was delivered on Saturday and I got to get it back up before the mail is delivered on Monday. Not that that's a huge problem. And if you're wondering why I didn't just go and buy a new mailbox, it's been there for 50 years. There's nothing wrong with it. I think it deserves to stay. <laughs> uh, but depending on how these brass plates came up, we, we may be buying a new mailbox. Anyway, Jim, this is a very good uh, Burley blend. Congratulations on it. And if you haven't had Edgeworth slices, let me know. I'd be happy to send you a sample for comparison because uh, this is spot on Edgeworth. All right, my friends, um, this Friday, will, there will not be a live stream. I'm taking the night off because this is my wife's birthday week, and we're going to do something fun on Friday. I don't know what yet, but uh, I'm going to spend Friday with my darling wife and help her celebrate her birthday. And we're probably going to take a trip to the beach this week as well. I'll keep you posted on that. Follow me on Instagram. It's Team Rod Piper, and uh, you'll get to see the pictures, and I'll, I'll update you on the week's the week's entertainment next Sunday so with that my friends I hope you have a wonderful Sunday and a fantastic week ahead and until we speak again I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon goodbye now mm -hmm.